Test. Calling you. 
Sail swiftly to the waves, and whoever board your ship is safe, immune from the hardships of the grave. Whoever mourns you in Karbala, in Karbala, in Karbala. When, when will we meet again, Ya Hussein? When under your door?
Salawat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزل العزيز الرحيم لتندر قوما ما أندر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأدقان فهم مغمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموت ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحسيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكتبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما عليكم إنا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب عليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أخصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلحة إن يردني الرحمن بذر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ظلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا قوم التب... قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا بي يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون 
وإن كن لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا من حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلق منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى أعدك العرجون القديم للشمس ينبقي لها أن تدرك القمر وليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشهون وخلقنا لهم من مثل ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقدون إلا رحمة منا ومتاع إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم انفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنتم من لو يشاء الله أطامه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الواد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسعة ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تذلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في الظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قول من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أحد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أظل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إسلوح اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو شاء لتمسنا على عين فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مذيع ولا يرجعون ومن نعمنه 
ينكس في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمنا الشعر وما ينبقي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعام فهم لا مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذ من دون الله آلحة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثل ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحيي الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر أخطر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والعرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو خلاق عليم إنما أمره إذا راد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليك يا ابن عبد يا ابا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا خيرة الله وابن خيرته السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدتي نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن الثار والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عزمت الرزية وجلت وعزمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعزمت, وجلت وعزمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله ممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برأت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشيعهم واتبعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل الزياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاتبا ولعن الله ابن مرجانا ولعن الله عمر بن السعد ولعن الله الشمرا ولعن الله أمة أصرجت والجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بيبي أنت وأمي لقد عزم مصابي بك فاسعل الله الذي أكرم, أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثأرك مع إمامي منصور من أهل, البيت أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله 
اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها الحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني يتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسولي وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى حسني وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قتلك ونصب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وابرأوا إلى الله وإليه رسولي ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برأت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وتقربوا إلى الله ثم إليكم موالاتكم وموالات وليكم والبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن وعلاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم وأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثأري مع إمام حدا ظاهر ناتك بالحق منكم فأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذين لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصاب بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبته مصيبة ما أعزمها وعزم رزية في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقام هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا يا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتى مماتى محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني هذا يوم دبركت به بنو أمية فابنه آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان النبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن موفق موقف وقفى فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد بن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبا لعنة أبد العابد أبد العابدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضائف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني تقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقف هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن الإصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايت وتابعت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا عبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعل الله آخر الأهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أولا ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم لعن الثانية والثالثة والرابعة اللهم لعن يزيد خامسة ولعن أبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانا وعمر بن سعد والشمرة وعلى أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم 
الحمد لله على عظيم الرزية رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين واصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا محجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام صلوات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم a friend of Hussein and also the companion of Nabi and Ali. Let me tell you who is he and what is he. Al Kufi sent an in insincere Ariza a plea. He did not use his old age excuse to plea. A friend in need is a friend indeed. The epitome of that is Ibn Mazahir. His name is Habib. And what divine mystery is this? that his parents chose for him the name Habib. And through few degrees of separation, he became God's Habib. How is that? In case you are wondering, then just listen to this, please. Muhammad Mustafa rose to become Allah's Habib. And through Hussein Minni, Abba Abdullah became Habib of Allah's Habib. And when standing alone, Hussein raised his hands for divine help, and through the dust of Karbala, a figure arose. Zainab announced, O oh brother, smile, smile that Allah has sent you your Habib. Fast forward year 2022, a new century, looking through the crowd of Aza Husseini, another of Allah's Habib, calls upon you and me. Well, the old Ibn Mazahir said, Labbaik to Hussein. Please raise your fist and say with me, Labbaik ya Mahdi. Labbaik ya Mahdi. Labbaik ya Mahdi. Labbaik ya Mahdi. Salaam alaikum, everyone. First of all, welcome to the Mahdi Youth Society's 2022 Muharram programs. First of all, I want to acknowledge Brother uh, what's his name? Hussein Malik for that beautiful recitation. MashaAllah. Uh, we are looking for more reciters who are young, who are passionate, who are English speaking. I'm just, I'm just, just joking. But uh, if you have any piece of poetry that you, you'd like to present, uh, be it a uh, piece of poetry, be it a piece of noha, if you, if you would like to take part in Quran recitation or Ziyarat Ashura, please feel free to, to reach out to any of the uh, Mahdi Youth Executive members and we'd be more than happy to facilitate that, inshallah. All this Muharram, we are invited to have Lan Ali Islami. I've been uh, introducing him every night, uh, and I think he's sick of my uh, introductions, so I'll, I'll leave the introduction there for now. But um, Lana, we are extremely uh, invited to have you, and we look forward to, this, to these exciting nights ahead. Um, so the programs, the structure is kind of changing a bit. We'll be, we'll be shifting the programs to start at 7.15 p.m. inshallah every night. So instead of 7, 7.15 p.m. with Quran and Ziyarat al-Shura, followed by the Malana speech inshallah. Thirdly, we, will, we would like to thank you all for taking part in the sponsorships for the Sabil. As you all are aware, we have Sabil service that's being held in both the brother's side and sister's side outside, the moment you enter. The Sabil service starts from 7 p.m. and lasts all the way up to 8 p.m. So we encourage you all to come and uh, take some sharbat and uh, be part of this, of this, uh, of this sabab, inshallah. And in speaking of Sabil, we also are looking for donations for Tabarruk. So as you all are aware, as you make your way out after the program, we are serving Tabarruk in a drive through fashion. And it's only possible with the help of your donations. So I encourage you all, be it a small amount, be it a large amount, reach out to any of the Mehdi Youth Executive members, and we'd be more than happy to facilitate your donations, inshallah. Um, fourthly, so the Mehdi Youth is planning to have a separate brothers and sisters discussion with Mulana Ali Islami. So the first discussion, which will be held on Friday, August 5th for the sisters, uh, its topic is centered uh, uh, around identity in the West, an Islamic perspective. And the brothers will be having their discussion the day after on Saturday, August 6th, which, with the topic being an, creating an Islamic environment for survival. So these discussions are going to be happening at individual houses. So in order for you to be able to attend, you're going to have to sign up online. We have links available on our socials, or you can join our WhatsApp Mahdi Youth Announcements group chat. You can contact any of the, uh, of the Mahdi Youth members if you're not part of that already, and we'd be more than happy to add you to it so you can stay up to, uh, stay up to date with all our announcements and information. 
Uh, and with that, sorry, last thing. So for those of you who are not comfortable coming inside the hall, we have a radio frequency being offered. So if any of you prefer to sit in your cars with your kids, you can tune into 87.9 and listen to the majlis from there. The entire program will be streamed uh, on the radio. So if any of you are not comfortable coming inside, that is an alternate choice you have. With that being said, I'd like to invite uh, Milana to the, to the member and I'd request you all to stand up and make your way all the way down here to the corners. We're trying to uh, facilitate a, um, a large crowd tonight. So, as salawat Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Brothers, all the way down, all the way to these walls. Please uh, move all the way down here. I don't want to see any gaps. Brothers, all the way down, all the way down. Just, uh, just a reminder, so we have this green line that's set up at the back. We don't want any brother even close to that. That's just there to allow the brothers and sisters to feel comfortable in one hall. So brothers, all the way down. I still see a lot of gaps here. Brothers, all the way down here. All the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. Push it. Push it. Push it. All the way. Yeah. And if, if, if we can have the small kids actually come to the front, like sit right around here in a circle, that'd be awesome. as salawat Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Daniel. Brothers, you're going to have to stand up. Daniel, I'm looking at you. Salawat Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala. All the way down, please. All the way. All right, thank you so much. And just before I give the mic to the Mulana, there's a request for Surah Fatiha. If you can, if you can include uh, these marhumin for tonight, Sayyid Ali Jafri ibn Sayyid Sayyid Ahmad Jafri, Sayyid Aliyah Jafri ibn Muhammad Yunus Jafri, Sayyid Abu Hussein Jafri ibn Sayyid Abid Hussein Jafri, Sayyid Abu Tahir Jafri ibn Sayyid Abid Hussein Jafri, Sayyid Muqaddis Khatun ibn Sayyid Mahbub Hussein Jafri, Sayyid Zarina Khatun ibn Sayyid Ali Hassan Rizvi, Sayyid Ahmad Jafri ibn Sayyid Ali Jafri, Sayyid Abdul Jafri ibn Sayyid Ali Jafri, Sayyid Rabab Banu ibn Abid Hussein Jafri, Sayyid Firdaus Panjatan Rizvi ibn Ali Hassan Ali Hassan Rizvi. Muhammad Arsalan Hussein ibn Bakr Hussein, Shanaz Begum bint Sayyid Bakr Ali Shah, Marhumin of the Sheikh family, and including all your Marhumin. Fatiha. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين فاطر السماوات والأرضين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا Yesterday we were talking about some of the types of suffering we face in this world are because of our own sins. Meaning Allah wants to punish us in this world in order to cleanse us before we enter paradise. So He punishes us here. But as we said, some punishments are harsh, even for the dunya. And we don't want to go through that let alone the punishment of the Akhirah. So we're also trying to look for other solutions. Are there other solutions to be waived from being punished in this dunya? Yes, there are some solutions. The Quran gives us one solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ The good deeds Take away the bad deeds. What does this mean? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, <laughs> If you've done something bad, you've committed a sin, commit a good deed 
and you will erase the bad deed. So, if you don't want Allah to punish you for your sin in this dunya, punish yourself before Allah punishes you. How do you punish yourself? You have to try to do good deeds. Not the usual ones you do every day. No, some new things. Things that you dislike. Things that you always run away from. Like washing the dishes. Or doing things that you leave for your parents to do. If you want to punish yourself, punishment isn't easy. It has to be something you don't like. So find one of those good deeds that you are always running away from and do them and punish yourself before Allah punishes you. This is one way to waive the punishment of God for the sin you have committed in this dunya. Now, this is compensation. Meaning you've done something bad, you have to compensate. You have to do something good instead. What if you don't have that compensation? You have no good deed to compensate for the bad deed you've done, to erase that. What happens? Our Imam Sadiq says in this regard, إذا أذنب المؤمن ذنبا ولم يكن عنده من العمل ما يكفرها ابتلا ابتلاه الله بالحزن. If a mu'min he commits a sin and he doesn't have a good deed to make up for that bad deed to compensate, what will God do? What is the smallest punishment? The easiest punishment? He says, Allah will make you go through sadness and distress and grief. He will make you sad. Have you experienced sometimes that you're sad and you don't know why? What is the reason? You're in distress and sometimes it leads to depression. You don't know what the reason is. The Imam says, that it's because of your sins. This is the penalty. This is the punishment. He will make you sad, so your sins will be cleansed. But he also gives us a solution. In order to waive this punishment, after you've become sad, if you've become depressed, many ask, does Islam have a cure for depression? I haven't done the research thoroughly, but I came across this hadith by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ اِغْتَمَّ كَيْفَ لَا يَفْزَعُ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَىٰ لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ He says, those who have غَم who are depressed, who are in distress and grief, they are experiencing th sorrow and sadness. What should they do? The Imam says, I am surprised. Haven't they read the Quran? Why don't they seek refuge in this verse of the Quran where the Prophet Yunus, in the stomach of the fish, the whale, in that darkness, in the sea, what did he say to Allah? He said, La ilaha illa ant. O oh Allah, there is no God but you. Subhanaka, exalted you are. Inni kuntu min al I was a wrongdoer. I did wrong to myself. I oppressed myself. The Imam says, haven't you seen what Allah says after this verse? He says, So, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ We answered his call. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ And we saved him from his distress and anxiety. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And as we will do the same for the mu'mineen. 
If a mu'min is in distress and going through anxiety or depression, your imam says, read this verse, La ilaha illa ant, subhanaki inni kuntu min al-zalameen, fastajabna lahu wa najjaynahu min al-gham, wa kathalika nunjil mu'mineen. You do read this in namaz al right? Reflect on the meaning. After Yunus said that, Oh Allah, there is no God but you. Exalted you are. I am a wrongdoer to myself. Allah says we answered his call and we saved him from his grief and sorrow. And so we shall do for the mu'mineen. Reflect on the meaning of the verse of the Quran when you're doing namaz al Repeat it. Until Allah gives you that relief. This is one cure. This is one solution for a punishment one individual is going through because of his sins. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Sometimes it's not one person who has, is being punished or deserves punishment. It's all of us. A whole community has to be punished for what they're doing. A whole city, a whole town, a whole nation sometimes has to be punished. What can they do to waive that punishment from them? This is the topic we're going to discuss today. When a nation deserves to be punished because of their sins or neglecting their obligations and their duties towards Allah and the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, when they be, they're deserving punishment, Allah gives us two solutions to waive that punishment. He says in the Quran, مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لَيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah is addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says your nation deserves to be punished because of what they're doing. But as long as you are amongst them, I will not punish them. For your sake, I will show mercy to them as long as you're alive. Is this exclusively only for the Prophet? When you refer to the ahadith in our traditions, you find no, it's not only the Prophet. Some of the mu'mineen, the scholars, the ulama, have the same quality. They have the same privilege. In one hadith, a scholar by the name of Zakaria ibn Adam, he was the representative of Imam Riza in Qum. He was a great scholar, a faqih, an alim. And this man, he was sick and tired of being in Qum. At that time, there were only two cities that were Shia in that area, Qum and Kashan. And the later on, Sistan, Baluchistan, and Khurasan. But Qum and Kashan were the first Shia communities, not only in Iran, but in all the Islamic countries. They had the majority of Shia in them. But unfortunately, Zakaria was tired of them. He met the Imam when they were in Hajj. He's from Qum, the Imam is Medina. They met in Mecca. And the Imam asks about what's going on in Qom. How are you? Tell me about Qom. He says to the Imam, Inni uridu al-khuruj min ahl bayti. I want to leave my people, the city of Qom. I can't take it anymore. Why? He says, فَقَدْ كَثُرَ السُّفَاءَاءُ فِيهِمْ Too much ignorant and foolish people. They don't listen to me. No matter how, how hard I'm trying, 
but they're not listening. They're ignorant. They're foolish. And I'm tired. I want to leave. You know what the Imam says to him? He says, don't do that. God will not punish them as long as you are amongst them. You, Zakaria, Ibn Adam. For your sake, God will have mercy upon those people, the followers of Ahlul Bayt. In Qum, stay there because you are the reason God is showing them mercy. Just like my father's grave, Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. has brought mercy. My father's grave in Baghdad has brought mercy upon the people of Baghdad. Your presence among the people of Qom is mercy for them. And because of you, Allah will not punish them. He will not send the adab upon them. Now, we want to know who Zakaria ibn Adam is. Because we're lo- we want to look for people like him, right? We want to keep people like him amongst us. He's a reason God will not punish us or our community. If we could find people similar to this man, we should bring them over or keep them here because they're mercy to our community. What did Zakaria ibn Adam do to deserve this? In another hadith, someone goes to Imam Riza salam, and he asks him. He says that I live in Hamadan, a city in Iran. The Imam is Medina. He says, I am very far away from you. The Imam is alive. Who do you go to when you want to ask your questions, Islamic law questions, your beliefs, your aqidah? Who do you go to when your Imam is alive? You go to the Imam. But when you're far away, what should you do? He says to the Imam, I am far away. I don't know how to get the answers of the questions I have. The Imam says, I refer you to Zakaria ibn Adam, who is in Qum. Why? Who is this man? He says, this man is ma'moon ala deen wa dunya. He is reliable. And trustworthy on your deen and your dunya, your religion and your worldly matters. He is a guardian of your deen and a pr- protector of your faith and your dunya. Refer to him, go to him. You don't have to come to me. There is a alim, a scholar there near you. Go to him and ask your questions. Whatever he says, I, re- I trust him and I rely on him, so should you do. Zakaria was in Qom at the time when after our Imam Musa ibn Ja'far passed away. You know that a group of the Shia, the followers of the Imam, who followed one of his representatives, Ali ibn Yaqteen. Ali ibn Yaqteen said, no, the Imam is not dead. And Imam Riza is not his successor, the next Imam. So they became the Waqafiyya. Those who did not accept the Imam of Imam Riza But in Qum we didn't have these people. Because of Ali ibn Zakaria ibn Adam. We didn't have Waqafiyya in Qum. We didn't have the Ghulat in Qum because of Zakaria ibn Adam. Those who were exaggerating about the status of the Imams and would attribute to them what they what must attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not in Qum. Zakaria ibn Adam made sure of it. The people of Qum, their faith, their aqidah must not go astray. He was the protector and the safeguardian of their deen and religion. When the Imam our eighth Imam passed away. Who was the next Imam? Imam Jawad alayhi salam.
Now, the Shia were having doubts who the next Imam is because the son of the Imam was seven years old. He was a child, apparently. How can they follow him? What would the others say about us? The other schools, our brothers, the other Muslims, what would they say about us? They're going to make fun of us. What will happen to our reputation? The image of the Shia. They were thinking rationally. How can he be our Imam? I mean, it's embarrassing for us. But Zakaria ibn Adam made sure that the people of Qom know who their Imam is. He made sure of that. And that is a person, for his sake, in that city, Allah will not punish the people of that city. If you find people similar to that, who is a safe guardian, who will protect your faith and religion, then he is a mercy to everyone around him. The Imam, our Imam Hadi alayhi salam says, if it weren't for the ulama after the occultation of the 12th Imam, those who invite others to their Imam, they indicate them to the Imam, they show them who their Imam is. Those who Defend the deen of their imam and their religion. Those ulama who save the weak, the Shia, the followers who are weak in faith, they save them from the traps of Iblis and being deceived and going astray. If it weren't for them, there, would no, there won't be any mu'mineen anymore. Those ulama are protecting the faith of the Shia. And the Imam says, it is because of them, those who are guiding the hearts of the weak Shia, the naive and ignorant Shia, they are saving them. And they're guiding their hearts like a captain is holding the steering wheel of a ship. They are steering the ship of the faith of people and the mu'mineen. That it was, this is what the alim in this time should do. Keep the faith of people intact. Protect their ideology and religion and deen. These are people that just like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, They are the ones that God will have mercy upon us because of them. I would ask the brothers to come forward to the member. There is space here next to me, and we want other people to join us. So Allah says in the Quran, Ma antafihim. I will not punish them as long as you are amongst them. Wa ma wahum yastaghfirun. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib says in regard to this ayah, in Nahjul Balagha, one of the securities that Allah has given us was the Prophet and he has gone. But one other is left. The second one. The Imam says, hold on to the second one. The istighfar. Hold on to that. If you do that, you will not be punished by Allah in this dunya. Now, what 
is meant by istighfar. It's not the one you do for yourself only. No. We talked about that yesterday. This istighfar is when you ask Allah to forgive others. When you do istighfar for yourself, you're only being selfish. I mean, it's good to be selfish in this way. But you are selfish. It's when you do istighfar and ask Allah to forgive others, that's when Allah is looking at you. This man, this woman, they're not looking only at themselves. They're not selfish. No, they're thinking about other people. They want Allah to forgive others. Doing istighfar is the only way to erase the sin of ghibah and backbiting. There's two ways. When you did that sin, ghibah, backbiting, what can you do? Either you tell them, you tell them, oh, I have spoken bad about you. Please forgive me. But that usually causes problems. They won't accept or they won't like it. Usually it won't end up good. You can't tell them what you've said about them behind their back. But there is a solution. It's that you do istighfar for that person. You ask Allah to forgive his sins every time. You do qunut and namaz. Ask Allah to forgive that person. If there's a list of people you've done ghaybah, then you're going to loot, your qunut is going to take a long time. You should keep them in mind. But you should always remember, before you do istighfar for yourself, do istighfar for others. Just like when you want to pray and ask Allah for something, first ask Allah to give others their hawa'ij and answer their requests. This way, God is looking at someone who is not selfish, doesn't want something for himself. He wants good for other people. Allah wants this. He likes this. And that is why He will answer your prayers and your du'as for yourself because you prayed for others first. This is in the hadith. Try to make it a habit, brothers and sisters. I've tried to do it for a couple of years, that whenever I want to pray for myself and ask Allah something for myself, I try to ask at least for someone else first. For anyone, your father, your brother, your friends. Ask Allah to give them their hawa'ij and grant them their wishes and solve their problems before you pray for yourself. In this way, Allah will pay more attention to you. The same goes for istighfar. When you ask Allah to forgive you, maybe He will, maybe He won't. Determines how sincere you are about it. But when you do istighfar for someone else, then Allah will look at you in another way. In namaz al shab the last prayer we have, in that prayer, it's only one rak'at, right? Where you raise one hand in qunut. And one of the things that you should do, which is mustahab, is you do istighfar, you ask for forgiveness for 40 people, dead or alive. Why is namaz al so important? Why does it have so many merits and so many thawab? The last namaz, you're praying for others. You're asking for others. Oh Allah, forgive my father, my mother, my brother, my wife, my grandparents, my friends. Especially when you ask Allah to forgive those who have done you wrong. That's something else. That's completely different. When Allah sees someone is asking to forgive someone who has done him wrong, Allah will say, you're not better than me. You're not better than me. You're forgiving the one that has harmed you and done wrong to you. 
How can I forgive you for committing so much sins? You forgive them, and Allah will forgive you. Even the worst things they've done to you. If they're mu'mineen, they're believers, save them for the worst sins you have committed. You save those forgiveness for the baddest things you've done. If you're really ashamed, you bring that up. You say, Allah, I've saved this one for you. You know that person who did this to me? And I said, I will never forgive him. I have forgiven him. What do you want to do now? Am I better than you? Allah says, no. You will not be better than me. I will forgive you. Show forgiveness to others, those who have harmed you. And Allah will forgive your sins. And He will not forget punishing you in this dunya, let alone the hereafter. One scholar, an alim, called Ali ibn Mahziyar Ahwazi. He, he was in the time of the occultation, at the beginning of the occultation, the ghaybah of Imam Zaman. He was looking for the Imam. He wanted to see the Imam and meet the Imam. And he yearned for a glimpse of the Imam. So he would go to Hajj every year. And his intention was that he will meet the Imam some way in Hajj. I mean, the Imam doesn't show himself to anyone, only those special people. Ali ibn Mahziar was a good person. And he tried to find the Imam and see him at least once. He yearned for that so much. He said, I went to Hajj 20 years with this intention, I mean, to do worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also, my other intention was that I wanted to meet the Imam in Hajj because I knew he comes to Hajj every year. So he says, after 20 years, I became hopeless. But someone told me, come, we're going to Hajj this year. At the beginning, I said, no, I'm not coming anymore. I've lost all hope in seeing my Imam and meeting him. But they insisted and he went. And this time, I'll make the story short, he got the opportunity to meet the Imam. Someone took him to Imam Zaman, Ajjadullah Ta'ala Farajhu Sharif. So the Imam says to him when they meet, and he falls on his feet and he cries, and the Imam is asking about what he's doing, he says, the Imam says to Ali ibn Mahziyar, قَدْ كُنَّا نَتَوَقَّعُكَ لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا فَمَا الَّذِي أَبْطَأَ بِكِ عَلَيْنَا I was waiting for you a long time, Ali ibn Mahziyar. Where were you all these years? Ali ibn Mahziyar is surprised, he said. He says, I was coming to Hajj 20 years just to meet you. And the Imam is saying that, where were you all these years? I was waiting for you. He says, there was no one to take me to you. I mean, it was just after 20 years, someone came and they led me to you. But all these years, I'm looking for you. I wanted to meet you. The Imam says to him, you know why you didn't deserve to see me all these years? It's because you, the Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, some of you have gathered a lot of wealth. MashaAllah. A good thing. But you're not helping those who are misfortunate. Those who are in need. Those followers we have that need their help. What kind of a community is this? Why aren't you helping others? Those who have power, are in positions, who have wealth, could help others. Why aren't you helping each other? Why aren't you looking after each other? Don't you see other people, other communities? When they come places here, all they do is connections with each other. Making friends, making connections. 
solving each other's problems. Everyone has a position somewhere, some power, some wealth. Someone needs a loan. Someone needs help, guidance, a mentor. What kind of community do the followers of Ahlul Bayt have? The Imam says to him, لَكِنَّكُمْ كَثَّرْتُمُ الْأَمْوَالِ You made a lot of money, not him specifically, but the people around him. وَتَجَبَّرْتُمْ عَلَى ضُعَفَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And you held yourself high from the mu'mineen that were weak and poor and were misfortunate. You stayed away from them. You kept them away. You had nothing to do with them. وَقَطَّعْتُمُ الرَّحْمِ الَّذِي بَيْنَكُمْ And you cut all connections from each other. What excuse do you have? فَأَيُّ عُذْرٍ لَكُمْ Then the Imam says this, يَبْنَ مَهْزِيَارِ لَوْلَا إِسْتِغْفَارُ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ لَهَلَكَ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا الْخَوَاسِ مِنَ الشِّيعَةِ If it weren't for some of you who did istighfar for others, all of you would have been perished and punished by Allah. The only thing that kept you safe from God's punishment, you and your people, he's talking about is the Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the only thing that has kept you safe from God's punishment is that some are doing istighfar for others. I mean, they're thinking about others that much at least, and that istighfar is preventing from Allah's wrath from befalling you. It's the istighfar you do for the others. This is what makes Allah have mercy upon that community, that nation. لَوْلَا إِسْتَغْفَارُ بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضُ لَهَلَكَ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا Istighfar for others was the last thing our mistress did. فاطمه الزهراء سلام الله عليها It's narrated that the last dua she did before she passed away she said to Allah Allahumma inni as'aluka bi Muhammadin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad I ask you for the sake of my father and my husband and my two sons. What is she asking for? And the last prayer she's making before she wants to go, أن ترحم وتغفر للعصات من أمة محمد وتدخلهم الجنة. I ask you to forgive the sinners from the ummah and nation of my father. Those who love my father and my sons and my husband. This is my last request. Forgive them. This is what Allah looks for in us, in communities like us. Sallallahu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. Sallallahu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. Sallallahu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. السلام عليك يا حبيب ابن مظاهر الأسدي. حبيب was a companion of أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام. the companion of the prophet. and he fought alongside أمير المؤمنين in the battle of Safin. after in Safin. After the Imam heard that Ammar ibn Yasir was killed, the Imam cried so much. One of his first companions and followers after Rasulullah was Ammar. He lost Ammar and he was very upset. Habib was there looking and he said, How honorable it is! to die for you, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ask Allah that He gives me the honor of Shahada in this battle here. Just like Ammar ibn Yasir. I want to become Shaheed because of you and for you. The Imam said to him, O oh Habib, no. 
your time has not come. Allah is saving you for a day much greater than this day. A shahada much greater than this shahada. An honor much greater than this honor. He is saving you for some day, another day. When, where, the imam takes a handful of earth, soil, he shows it to Habib and says, smell. He says, the scent and the smell of this soil and earth, the next time you smell and recognize it, this is the land that you're going to die in. Where are you going to be martyred? The soil will smell the same as this one that I've showed you. So Habib was waiting years and years until the year 68 after Hijrah. When a, someone came at the door of his house and secretly dropped a letter. The letter was small. Habib was eating food with his wife. He read the letter. It said, من الحسين ابن علي إلى حبيب ابن مظاهر From Hussein to Habib. O oh, Habib, you know my relation to Rasulullah. أنت تعلم قرابتنا من رسول الله. If you want to aid me and help me, I am close. أنا قريب في كربلاء. I am here close to you in Karbala. So Habib, he ate the small piece of paper and he swallowed it and his wife was sitting and watching. She said, what did the letter say? Who is it from? He said, it's from Hussein ibn Ali. What does he want? He wants my help in Karbala. So she says to him, what are you going to do? Habib doesn't pay attention. He wants to test his wife. He keeps, continues on eating his food. She says to him, What are you doing? Get up. Go, leave your food. Why are you sitting here? What are you waiting for? Habib says, If I go, you will be widowed and your children will be orphaned and you will have no food to eat. Who will bring food on your table? She says to him, Oh Habib, you're worried about my food? I will eat dirt if I have to. Get up. Go. He continues eating his food. She gets up. She removes her scarf and throws it on his head. He says, she says to him, You should have been a woman and stayed here, and I should have been a man. Ya Aba Abdullah, I wish I was a man and it could have come and help you. So Habib smiles at her and says, yes, I, I will go. Don't worry about me. I am going. So she says to him, then take me with you. He says, no. What do you want to do? It's going to be war. There's death. She says to him, but I have heard from my mistress Zainab that the women and children will be taken as captives. And I want to go and protect them and shield them. But Habib says, look, the invitation is only for me. I can't take you with you. You're not invited. So she says to him, oh, Habib, if you won't take me, then I have one request. Please say salam to Imam Hussein for me. So Habib says to his servant, his slave, take my sword and my horse. Go out of the city of Kufa behind the walls. Wait for me there. The enemies are keeping an eye on me. I have to come during the darkness and night. So Habib waits. He, it takes a long time before the coast is clear. When he reaches the outskirts of Kufa, he's looking for his servant and the horse. Suddenly he hears a man, a boy, talking. He comes closer and sees the servant talking to the horse. The servant is saying, oh horse, my master and your master Habib is late. He hasn't come. I think the enemy have caught him. If he doesn't come, I will ride you and go to Karbala. 
So Habib comes forward and says to the servant and slave, I have freed you for the sake of Allah. He says, are you doing me a favor? If you want to do me a favor, take me with you to paradise. I want Jannah, take me to Karbala. That's a favor. So Habib takes him and they ride the horse together. They go and go until they reach the outskirts of Karbala. Habib, when he reaches the land, before he reaches the camp of Imam Hussein, he comes down from his horse and he takes some earth from the ground and he smells it. He says, Subhanallah, this is the same soil that Amir al Mu'minin showed me on the day of Safin. It has the same scent. I have smelled, this is the land where I shall die. So he goes forward and he has a cane with him. Habib was an old man. He was 90 years old, some say. He threw his cane away. He said, I don't want them to see someone coming to help them, an old man with a cane. How good will that make them feel? He threw the cane away and he came towards the camp of Imam Hussein. On the other side, from inside the camp, Fizz is telling the other side of the story. She says that, I saw my master Hussein outside of the tent. He is walking back and forth as if he is waiting for someone. He keeps on looking in the direction of Kufa. Suddenly he says to his companions, go welcome your neighbor Habib. Go welcome Habib is coming. So the Imam is going forward. He goes faster than the others. And when they reach Habib and Hussein, Habib throws himself on the feet of Imam Hussein. Then he kisses the hands of Imam Hussein. Then the Imam embraces Habib and they both begin to cry. Habib is the reminder of Rasulullah. He reminds Imam Hussein of his father, Imam Ali. He is a reminder of them on the day of Ashura. The Imam didn't want to send Habib. He couldn't see him die in front of him. He asked permission. He said, let me go and die for your sake, Ya Abu Abdullah. But the Imam said to Habib, oh Habib, you're an old man. I hate to see you die. He says, am I no use of you, Ya Hussein? Am I so old, I can't do anything for you? So the Imam embraced him. And they cried. And Habib went to the battlefield, one by one. Habib and all the other companions went and they were martyred until no one was left but Imam Hussein. The Imam, he stands alone in front of the enemy. He puts the spear in the ground and he says, calling their names one by one, the companions who are lying on the ground. He calls them, Ya Muslim ibn Aqil, Ya Hani ibn Urwa. They are in Kufa. Why are he calling them? He's calling the loyal companions, his faithful companions. Imam Baqir says, when Imam Hussein called them one by one, their bodies would shake as if they wanted to come back to life and defend them. But the Imam is calling them and saying, Ya Hani ibn Urwa. Ya Habib ibn Mazahir, Ya Zuhair ibn Al-Qayn, Ya Muslim ibn Awsaja, Ya Hurr al-Riyahi. What does he want from them? He says, Ya Abtal al-Safa, Wa Ya Fursan al-Hayja. O loyal warriors and knights of battle. He asks them, Ma li unadikum fala tujibun. Why don't you reply when I call for you? Wa ad'ukum fala tasma'un. He asks, Are you asleep? Antum niyam. Arjukum tantabihun. Should I be hopeful? Should I be hopeful that you will awake? What is keeping you from aiding your imam? Then he turns and says to the companions, Pointing out to the women and children in the tents, uh, he says, don't you see these women and daughters of Rasulullah, they have become devastated for losing you. Rise from your sleep, O noble men, and defend the Prophet's family from these wretched men.
صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله أجرك الله يا بقية الله يا صاحب الزمان our condolences to you as we remember Habib ibn Madahir Habib with all of his distinctions with all of his excuses that he could have presented under siege blockaded his old age but none of that stopped him from reaching his master the imam of his time ya sahib az-zaman what excuses have i brought to you what have i done for you ya sahib az-zaman on the asr of ashura it's narrated فَنَظَرَ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا Abu Abdullah looked to the right, he looked to the left فَلَمْ يَرَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِهِ أَحَدًا and he can't find any of his companions left for him and he begins to call out to them one by one how valuable are these companions even after their death Abu Abdullah is missing them وَنَّوْمَتِكُمْ أَيُّهَا الْكِرَامِ Rise with me, O oh, you noble companions, Ya Sahib Az-Zaman. Ya Sahib Az-Zaman, we haven't been noble companions for you. We beseech you on this night, allow us to scale the ranks of Habib. Ya Hussein. Oh, Habib, listen close to me. Oh, Habib, listen close to me. That man over there, do you see? Oh, Habib, listen close to me. That man over there, do you see? I make my last will now to you. While he is alive, come to me. I make my last will now to you. While he is alive, come to me. At his service, with every breath, do not leave him until your death. At his service, with every breath, do not leave him until your death. La ara al maut illa sad. La hayata. لا حياة إلا الشهادة لا أرى الموت إلا الشهادة لا حياة Oh, Habib, listen close to me. That man over there, do you see? Oh, Habib, listen close to me. That man over there, do you see? I make my last will now to you. While he is alive, come to me. At his service, with every breath, do not leave him until Till your death at his service with every breath do not leave him until your death la ara al maut sada la hayata illa shahad la hayata once more la ara al maut
ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए कौन की हर दौलत देकर कौन की हर दौलत देकर इस गम की हिफाजत करना है इस गम की हिफाजत करना है शबीर के खातिर जीना है शबीर के खातिर मरना है शबीर के खातिर मरना है ये जिसम रहे या मिट जाए मजलूम का मातम करना है मजलूम का मातम करना है जहरा की तमन्ना पूरी हो ये जान रहे या मिट जाए जहरा की दुआ है माता ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए इस परचम की अजमत के लिए इस परचम की अजमत के लिए आबास ने बाजू दे डाले आबास ने बाजू दे डाले इस परचम की इज्जत के लिए गाजी ने सहे दिल पर बाले गाजी ने सहे दिल पर बाले इस परचम के मशकी जाजे लिपटे है सकीना के नाले लिपटे है सकीना के नाले आबास अली का परचम है ये परचम कैसे झुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए सालार हुसैनी क्या कहना सालार हुसैनी क्या कहना मेरा ज वफा सर ताज वफा मेरा ज वफा सर ताज वफा हर मौज तड़पती है अब तक साहिल से जो तू पलटा प्यासा साहिल से जो तू पलटा प्यासा था हुक्म हुसैनी जंग न की हर बार सहा हर जुल्म सहा हर बार सहा हर जुल्म सहा होश में जब तक फिक्र थी क्या सी न सकी ना रह जाए सहरा की दुआ है ये माता ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ ये मातम कैसे जब तक ये सकत इस जिसम में है जब तक ये सकत इस जिसम में है हक अपना दा कर देना है हक अपना दा कर देना है इस माँ जो सादत से हमको ये जान फिदा कर देना है ये जान फिदा कर देना है या अश्क से या खून दिल से इस दामन को भर देना है इस दामन को भर देना है आई है यहाँ एक शहजादी उम्मीद का दामन फैलाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए जहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए ये मातम है हलमिन की सदा मातम है 
ہر عشق ہے جذبہ نصرت کا ہر عشق ہے جذبہ نصرت کا یوں حق کی طرف آ جانے کا حاصل ہے ابھی تک ایک موقع حاصل ہے ابھی تک ایک موقع پہچان زمیر و دل کی صدا اس ماتم میں شامل ہو جا اس ماتم میں شامل ہو جا شابیر بلاتے ہیں اب تک گر ہروں کہیں تو آ جائے زہرا کی دعا ہے یہ ماتم یہ ماتم کیسے رک جائے زہرا کی دعا ہے یہ ماتم یہ ماتم کیسے رک جائے زہرا Everyone Every time I felt you took my hand When I lose balance you help me stand Every time I felt you took my hand When I lose balance you help me stand I let go of you You hold on to me I let go of you You hold on to me Oh, say no Say, who am I that you are mine? Your love is God's great sign. Oh, say, no, say, who am I that you are mine? Your love. For the one with no friends on his own You come to his side when he's alone For the one with no friends on his own You come to his side when he's alone I call out to you You respond to me I call out to you You respond to me Oh, say no Say, stay with me I'm sorry I took your love lightly Oh, say no Say, who am I that you are mine? Your love is God's great sign. Oh, say, no, say, who am I that you are mine? Your love. When the world throws everything my way From your path my heart begins to sway When the world throws everything my way From your path my heart begins to sway Keep me close to you Don't get rid of me Keep me close to you Don't get rid of me Oh, say no Say I'm in need I must be freed 
from the chains of my greed. Oh, say, oh, say, stay with me. I'm sorry I took your love lightly. Oh, say, no, say, who am I that you are mine? Your love is God's great son. You're staring in God's eyes. Come take a glance at me. I'm begging, I know I'm of your love, not worthy. Everyone who met you was taken to the skies. If you come, awaken my soul, then I won't die. I don't care for gardens. Your footprints are heaven I am scared of distance I'll come sprint, no question The presence of Master My only desire His essence forever Burns in me like fire Hussein, Hussein Everyone goes but for me you remain Hussein, Hussein Everyone goes but for me you remain Hussein, Hussein Everyone goes but for me you remain Hussein, Hussein Everyone goes but for me you remain Everyone goes but for me you remain Hussain, Everyone goes but for me Abdullah, Abdullah, Sallallahu alaykum ya ahla bayt We want to make dua as we make a dua every night with your loudest ilahi ameen Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nad'uk Bismika al-azim al-azam Al-azz al-ajal al-akram ya Allah Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rahim, ya Muqallib al-Qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik, ya Allah, whatever trial, whatever tribulation you give us, never let our hearts sway from the path of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ya Allah, every one of our family members, those who may seem far from the path, I know that Hussein is near them. Ya Allah, keep them all on the path of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ya Allah, those who are sick from our family members, those who asked us in al-Tamas dua some said, you're going to the majlis, pray for me. Ya Allah, whatever issue they have on this night, cure them. 
Ya Allah, many of the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Muslims around the world are oppressed. Ya Allah, make us their solution. Ya Allah, the oppressors and the enemies of Islam, strengthen us so that we may be the cause of their destruction. Ya Allah, strengthen the Muslims on the front line, our scholars, our maraj, our leader. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, all these mourners have come here tonight seeking the faraj of their mawla sahib al-zaman. Ya Allah, make every one of them commanders in his army. Wa'ajjal allahumma fi faraj mawlana sahib al-zaman. Bin Nabi wa alih wa bil fatiha ma'a salawat. Can we please have the brothers stay in this hall so we can have the sisters exit first, please? Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad al Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum, ya Khadija al Kubra. Assalamu alaikum, ya Fatima al Zahra, Sayyid al Nisa al Alamin. Assalamu alaikum, Ali al Murtada. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sal al Mushtaba. جميعا السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب خصوصا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا الفضل العباس يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وأختيك زينب أم كلسوم وبنتك السكينة السلام عليك جميعا شهداء كربلاء ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب الأسر والزمان الأمان 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 من فتنة الزمان أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسحل الله تعالى مخرجك وزهورك وجعلنا من أنصارك وأوانك جميع ورحمة الله وبركاته
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله اكبر الله اكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أشهد أن أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين علي ولي الله أشهد